Are you ready for the practice? I hope you are. We're going to create a new document. Most of the time, the publishers are going to give you the defined size for the paper, for example, or the artboard, and they're going to tell you the margins is this, the gutter is that, the font is that. I'm going to be the publisher today. A new way to create a new document is going to the upper menu, select File, New, please select Document. We're going to do a poster, even though I already told you before that if you're going to do a, a poster or a cover of a magazine, you have to use Illustrator or Photoshop. But on this specific um, exercise, as we're going to make a practice on grids and layout, we're going to use InDesign, okay? So, we're going to select Print. As you can see, you have the same options as if you do it with Create New, um, create new Document with the button that you have right here. So, view all presets, and we're going to select letter half. Where it says units, please select inches. We're going to have only one page, so we don't need facing pages. Keep the same numbers that we have right here. On the margins options, there's something really important. This chain that you have right here is going to help you to keep the same numbers if you have it selected. For example, right now I have it like this. So if I change right here, one number is going to change in all the numbers. But if I unlock it, I'm going to be able to put a dif different um, number on each box. For example, I'm going to put it here. Okay? So this is what it works uh, for the margins. Now, bleed and slug. Bleed and slug is an extra of an area that you can print things. Um, let me show you, for example, how is the document. Right now, we have it like this. When you put bleed, I'm going to put 0 0.2. This red line is going to appear. That means that I can place photographs till this area, and when people cut the paper, there's no problem at all because the picture is going to be just right at the corner, okay? So this is bleed, in Spanish will be sangrado. Please, where it says bleed and slug, write down 0 0.2, and on the margins, we're going to put the same number in all of them. Please write down 0 0.2. Once you have it like this, click Create. So, what are we going to do? You're going to download some files that I already uploaded on a link. Just below this video, you're going to find on the description a link. Please, pause this video and download all the files. I'm going to be right here waiting for you. Once you have downloaded all the videos and all the files and everything that is on that link, what are we going to do? Well, let's go. Remember that you already saved it some, some place in your computer. In my case, I have it right here. This is the link. So is exercise files. What are we going to do? Well, we have the example, we have fonts, icon, logos, and Santa Fe. Fonts, it's really important that you unzip these two files. Why? Because you're going to use them and you're going to install it in your computer. If you don't remember how to do it, I'm going to do an example. If you are a Mac user, this is going to work for you. For PC, it's almost the same, just a different window. When you uh, unzip, you're going to have a folder. This is the folder that I have. Please, you're going to install the following font. In Bebas, you're going to install the one that says True Type Font, TTF. You're going to double click it and then click install font. Once you have installed it, you're going to have it in your fonts cat catalog. Okay. Later, what are you going to do? You're going to do the same thing with Roboto. Out with the Roboto, the one that we're going to use is Roboto Thin. Okay. The one that is right here, you're going to install it and we're going to use those two fonts. And that's it. Remember, you can pause the video if you need to do it by your own right now. Once we have the fonts installed, let's go back to InDesign. So I am back to InDesign. We are going to learn how to place uh, images in, and icons in our document. Let's go to the top menu, File, Place. If you have a PC, Control D. If you have a Mac, Command D. We're going to place the example exercise and once you have it like this, you have two options. If you just click it like one click and release the mouse, you're going to have it like this. 
or you can hold the mouse, press shift, and have it like this. So you're the one who's going to define the size, but sometimes the image is bigger than the format that you're working, okay? So we're going to have, um, this is a, an example of what we're supposed to do. The first thi uh, thing that you have to consider is that you have to define grids. Right now, we have this margin. Remember that this are, is the margin of the document. So with the use of the ruler and guides, you're going to define where do you want to place, for example, the image. You are going to click the ruler, you're going to get a guide, and then you're going to release it. Remember that we're going to do a similar exercise. It's not identical, okay? Then I'm going to do this other one. I'm going to define the grid of my design. I have three columns right here. Now let's use the rule so you can ruler so you can understand how it's better to make uh, I don't know similar columns uh, with the same size. As you have the ruler, you're going to be able to define, for example, the distance that you need between each um, column. Right now, I'm going to do it uh, with one inch. So I'm going to separate it here, for example. I'm going to, um, if you come to the corner of the ruler, you're going to be able to define, for example, where do you want to have the, um, the zero. So I'm going to have it like right here. I'm going to grab the guide and I'm going to have one here. I'm going to leave this space and another one is going to be right here. Mm -hmm. Another one again. And the other one is going to be right here. So I already have my three areas that I have right here. So here I'm going to write down a global, target, and setting business, okay? Where I'm going to place the text, for example, is going to be on this area. And maybe where do I want to place the lower block? I'm going to place it from here. So what I already have done here is a grid. This area is going to define me where I want to place all the elements. You can use layers, for example, like uh, you have used in Illustrator and Photoshop, because it's going to make it easier to select some elements. Right now, for example, I'm going to put here a reference, because it's going to have the guides and this image. I'm going to do the first step. I'm going to add one. It's just like in Photoshop and Illustrator. Remember that this one is to add, and this one is to delete. I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to place the image, the picture. So let's go to File place Santa Fe. Remember that there are two ways of placing the image. If I just do one, one click, the, the image is so big. So maybe in this specific case, I'm going to do it like this. Now it's okay if you have the elements outside. Why? Because remember that they're going to be cut right here, right at the corner of the page. So place the image where you want to. If you want to make it larger, press Command Shift and then use the mouse, okay? So you can keep proportion. So I'm going to place it right here. Now, one important thing that we're going to learn on this video is about frames. You're going to say, Brenda, this is getting outside the bleed area. And it's okay, you can let, leave it like this, or you can come and edit and go back. As you can see, the image is not going to change. You're changing the frame that contains the image. How can we get the colors that we have right here? Really easy, PC, easy, PC. Well, we have the eye drop. Remember that the colors that we have, they are limited. And if we want this and this one, how can we do? One way is to get the eye drop, click it here. You're going to have the green color. Then you can go to the top menu click the three lines, and then new color swatch. If you have this alert, as I do, it's telling you that it's out of gamut. It means that the color is darker than the way you see it on screen. So please click it again, and you're going to have the green. If you want to name it, you can keep it like this, or you can put the name that you prefer. I'm going to put Tiffany, because it reminds me Tiffany. 
If I want to get the blue color, I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the top menu, new color swatch, name it, and I'm going to write down dark blue. So this is going to be, for example, a rectangle and some triangles. So where do I want to place it? You can create a new layer. I'm going to uh, write it down as object. And be sure to be on this specific layer when you do the drawings. So this is a rectangle. I'm going to draw it right here. Remember that you can get out of the area. If you don't want to have a stroke around it, just select it and then the red line is going to make it disappear. Okay, you are not going to have a stroke around the, the image that you're doing. And we have a triangle right here. It's an exercise for you to remember a little bit what we have seen in the past. I'm going to select Tiffany. I'm going to delete the stroke. And maybe I'm going to place it right here, another one. Let's see, I'm going to create another triangle here. And I'm going to change it right here. As a suggestion, try to keep it always outside because you want to keep, for example, the colors. You don't want a, a white margin. Okay, let me see if I can move this one. And this one goes right here. Something's going on. There you go. I'm going to keep it like this. So I already placed an image, already used the pen tool as you already use it in Illustrator and Photoshop. How does it work with the text? Well, the type tool is the one that we have right here. If you want to write a text, you need to do a text box. I'm going to put a down 2021. I'm going to select the font that we just downloaded. If you can remember is Bevas. Regular. And you're going to select the size that you prefer. In my case, maybe 30. Now, as we just did with the objects right here, we're going to select the colors both in two ways, right here or right here. For me, it's easier in the top menu. So I'm going to select this one. And instead of black, I'm going to select white. But uh, one difference from the other softwares is that here it says paper because everything that you're doing in design is for be printed or for being seen like a um, paper. Okay, that's why it doesn't say white. So I'm going to select white and I'm going to place it right here over the blue block. Okay, now this exercise is important for me because we are defining a grid as you already seen here. And because we're going to import images and some icons that we have in other software. So let's go back to our files. Remember that we have um, the, the files that we downloaded. Let me, sorry, I didn't keep it um, open. Let me go back. And remember that we have the example and we have some icons and we have a um, logo exercise, please. Select these two files and open them in Illustrator. Why are we going to open in Illustrator? Because today I'm going to show you how to copy and paste it. Remember that Adobe, um, they have similar software and they have similar tools. That means that they're going to be able to copy and paste in between them, okay? So let's open Illustrator. I hope you have enough memory in your computer. And once it's already open, what are we going to do? We are going to select the logo and we're going to paste it on the InDesign document. Okay, let's go to Illustrator. Let's go, where is Illustrator? It's right here. We're going to select this one. One important thing is that the logo has to be a vector. How do I know it's a vector? I'm going to press Command Y so you can see, ha, huh, it's a vector. So I'm going to copy Command C or Control C 
if you are in a PC, and you're going to go to InDesign, and you're going to select Command B. Keep in mind that um, you have to press Shift. If you don't press Shift, you're going to transform the logo. It's going to be the same way as it happens in, in Illustrator, okay? As this is a vector, you're going to be able to change the color. For example, I can change it into white. And remember to press Shift and Command each time you're reducing or transforming the size of an element. I'm going to place it here. So this is how you're going to import elements from Illustrator. Let's go back. As you can see right here, we have three elements. I'm going to select randomly. I'm going to close this one. Now I'm going to select this. This is a vector file. I'm going to come here. I want them to keep like the same uh, alignment, so I'm going to define where I'm going to place the icons and where is the text is going to start. For example, this is going to be for the titles and this is going to be for the rest. Let's see. Like this. So the icons are going to be placed right here. I'm going to paste. If I want to have the new color that I just saved, I'm going to select it here. And I'm going to use this area and here you have it. Once we have uh, the icon, we're going to copy the other two. I'm going to select them right here. I'm going to copy Command C or Control C, depending if you have a Mac or a PC, and I'm going to paste them. I'm going to change the color of both at the same time. And then I'm going to adapt them to this area. Now, I copy both so you can find out that when you copy, something that comes from Illustrator is going to come group. Remember that everything that you can, for example, change or modify in a drawing, you can use your mouse, your right click on your mouse. I'm going to select ungroup, and here I have them. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to group it, and I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to group it, and I'm going to transform it and place it here. How can we align some elements? Well, we're going to learn about it. I'm going to place it right here. So I'm going to select the three elements that I just brought from Illustrator. And later, I'm going to come to this area window. Then I'm going to select the option object and layout align. You can keep all the windows that you open and save them right here to the right, okay? So here you are going to have this, uh, these options. For example, this one is for the left to the horizontal or to the right. But the one that I want to show to you all is this one, okay? What are we going to do? I'm going to select the three elements, click, click, and click. I'm going to align them in a vertical center. Then I'm going to select the one that is right here because I want them all to have the same space from this area to this area, okay? And here you have it. Now, if you want to align it to a column, for example, I'm going to draw a rectangle. This is one way. And of course, you can use the ruler if you want to align it better. I'm going to do it right now, select the two objects, then do it like this. As it's supposed to have like the same um, size, I'm going to apply it here too. And I'm going to apply it to the one at the right. And there you have. The three elements are already aligned and they are inside the layout. The next step, let's take a look to the reference. I have some text, I have a title, and I have a, an information right here. So what are we going to do? I'm going to draw the text. I'm going to make a text box or a type box. I'm going to write down skills. Remember that we selected Bevas. I'm going to write down Bevas. It was regular if I'm not wrong. And I'm going to change it into green color. This is an exercise where you are going to learn how to define a grid, okay? So later um, you're going to find out how to add text and more information in, pre in the following videos. I'm going to transform the size
I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to place it here. And play. Now, as you can see, I am using the grid or the layout that I already designed. Now, what else I'm going to do? I'm going to write down some uh, information right below. I'm going to put again another line because I want to have specific space from the title to the text. And this is new. What are you, are you going to do? You're going to select the type tool. You're going to make a box. You're going to select the other font that we downloaded. If I'm not wrong, it was Bebas and Roboto. So it's going to be Roboto Lite. The font, we're going to change it maybe 12 or 10. 12 is okay. And what are we going to do right here? Let's go to the top menu where it says type. And then please go where it says fill with placeholder text. Huh? We're going to say, well, why, why it happened? Well, this is, um, this is not real. This is called Loren Ipsum in Latin. In Spanish will be texto simulado. It's a combination of capital letters and sentences that looks um, more real. Like if you have information, but uh, the editor or the writer haven't sent it to you. So you're going to put, um, for example, this type of text to make an idea of how it's going to look at the end. Okay. And um, if you think that it is too big, for example, I'm going to reduce the size of it. I'm going to put eight. Now, if I want to continue filling this area, remember, go to the to uh, top, type, and here you have it. And it's going to look more real. I'm just going to duplicate it. And here you have, for example, how it's going to look. As you can see, it has like the same format, the same idea. What else are we going to do? Here you have some lines. Well, there are two ways of doing these lines. I'm going to do it both ways. One way is to select the line tool, just as you did, for example, in Illustrator, and you're going to draw it. You're going to select the color. In this case, it's going to be this one. And there you have it. Now, remember that you can align it to the middle. In this case, I was lucky and it was already aligned. The other way to do it is using the pen tool, like the one I have right here, you're going to draw it from this area to this area and then change it. So you are able to select the one that works better for you. Okay, and here you have it. If you want to have more space, for example, in between the text and the line, what you can do is to reduce the, the size of the frame of the text. Remember, as we've seen in Illustrator, if you have this red area, it's because you have extra text. So I'm going to make it larger. So everything is going to fit. Let me change it right now. I'm going to align the three elements. So I'm going to be able to duplicate this one. Try to use the smart guides because the smart guides are the ones that are going to help you. As you can see right now, it's telling me where, where it's going to be aligned to the middle. And here I have it like this. And the last but not the least, we're going to do the bottom. And I have to put annual report, sorry. So let's write down annual. Bebas is going to be the one that's going to work for us. The size, remember that you can write it down or you can change it like this. If it disappears, it's because the letter is bigger than the box. Don't worry, just make it larger, like I just did. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to change this one to report. I'm going to use Roboto. Roboto. And uh, I'm going to report is like this and maybe I'm going to change the size of it the box is going to define the area where you're going to place for example the text and that's why it's important for you to understand that if 
you are not able to see it is because it's hidden. It's not that it doesn't exist, okay? Now I'm going to align both of the text to the center. And here I have the animal report. Let me put it here. And if I'm not wrong, they are all in blue color. Dark blue. And dark blue. Where is dark blue? Here it is. So you can change and transform one idea to another one. What I want you to find out is that you can import from Illustrator icons and logos and text and you can adapt the frames. I'm going to make another video explaining frames, but this is like an introduction to frames. Okay, and at the bottom, we're going to do another rectangle. It's going to be in blue color. I'm going to erase the stroke. And if I'm not wrong, it already has the blue color. Let me check and confirm. Yes, it has. Then, um, as you see, it has many icons. Well, you already know that you can come here to Illustrator and select the icons that you need. For example, maybe you need a phone or maybe you need, uh, I don't know, um, the Zoom icon. I'm going to copy both, both and I'm going to paste it here. Remember that they come grouped, but you can ungroup it like this. If you don't like to use the right click of your mouse, you can go to Object. And here you're going to find the same option. Remember that common G is for grouping and then grouping is common shift G. If you want to have it in white, it's easy. Come here to the top, select paper. I'm going to group it and I'm going to place it right here where I need it. Yoey. Now, always consider the border of the page. Why? Because you don't want to cut this icon, correct? And of course, you need to consider that if this bleed is not helping you to understand how big it is, you can place it here, and at the end, you can make it larger, okay? So you can say, hey, I'm going to align this object right here, and then write the text that you need. I'm going to make a box, and I'm going to say um, search. Oh, let's see, it would be Roboto. And I'm going to write down search. Again, if it's in red, it means that it's over there, but it's hidden. If you want to make it smaller, it's up to you. I'm going to select this other one. I'm going to use only two because I don't want to make a, a larger video because I, I want you to do the practice and to find out how, how many changes you can do in a design because at the end, you're learning how to design. Let me, oops, move it right here. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to duplicate it. Remember pressing Option or Alt. I'm going to align all the elements to the middle. I'm going to press shift to select all of them. And here you have it. I know it looks different. I know that it doesn't even have like the same um, proportion, but as an exercise for you to find out how to make a grid, it was useful because you know that you have to put gu guides. Of course, in this case, I didn't define uh, how many columns. For example, I can decide five or six columns, but I believe that it was better to use the guides to the position that I needed. I hope you understood. I hope it works for you. And if you have doubts or comments, try to watch it again or write me or call me. I'll be here for you. See you on the next video. Bye.